Welcome, everyone. I'm Felix Levine. To my right, John A. Light, and our guest today, Angie. Thank you uh, for being here. Oh, I thought he was going to say my last name. Oh, Angie, Angie Dress. Oh, good. And, <laughs> um, but for before, the people that don't know, <laughs> if you say Perez, just get rid or, of the P with old. the J. Or Juarez. Juarez. You, don't, you have no idea how many times I've gotten Juarez. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, don't, don't mess it up. Um, before we get into it today, we want to just remind you to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and subscribe to our Patreon. You'll be able to ask John anything you want. All bonus content goes there and all content goes there early, so make sure you sign up there we also want to give a big shout out to dr kramer at cannabisexamny.com medical marijuana is now legal in new york state which means you can now go to www.cannabisexamny.com today to start the process on getting your new york medical marijuana card again cannabisexamny.com today go get your new york medical marijuana card you get a 100 percent refund if you don't qualify we'll put the link in the description of this video so go check it out today and for that guy that keeps talking about my sunglasses, <laughs> I'm smoking Dr. Kramer's stuff. So <laughs> the truth is that's why I got the glasses on. And, and for these bats that John's holding, um, we've gotten a lot of requests uh, about them and more information. Hit me up at Felix.Levine on Instagram if you'd like to get one. You can get just the bat alone, custom signed by John. Um, all that information is available when you just message me on, on Instagram. So today, Angie. Um, we're super happy to, to have you on the show, so thank you for well, being here. Uh, thank you for having me. Really thank you for seeing you again. So for the masses out there that, that aren't familiar with you, will you just give a quick description of a little bit about you so that people can uh, get to know you a little bit better? Sure. So my name is Angie Jerez, how you said, and pronounced very well. Thank you. Um, I am an actress and a TV host. I worked uh, many, many years ago, not many years ago, but some years ago, for Verizon VCAS. I don't know if you guys remember, VCAS was, and Verizon was one of the pioneers of putting TV on their phones. They had something called VCAST, and I competed against, I'm gonna say over 100 people, and I was selected as their um, Verizon VCAST Latin host. I worked for them for over five years, and what I did was, every time Verizon sponsored something like Latin billboards or Latin Grammys or, uh, when dance, dance competitions in Arizona, I would be the person that would go out there and host it and um, make these little clips that were then put on um, the phones for VCast. So after that, I've continued my um, TV hosting and my acting, and that's what I do today. And how did you kind of get into, I guess, acting and, and TV hosting in the beginning? So I started taking acting classes, theater actually, okay. when I was nine years old. Wow and in the Dominican Republic, not even here. Um, and then from that, I just, I just love entertainment. It's my thing, it's my passion. Like, I, I could do anything else, but I've, I'm always gonna do acting. I don't care if it's like in the theater, around the corner, I'm always gonna do acting. Um, and that's how it started, I was, I was nine. So you yeah. fell in love with it right when you, yeah, right absolutely. off the bat? Yes. Wow. And then, have you, have you ever done any acting? I feel like I could see when <laughs> you're gonna continue I'm holding gonna it like that. I'm gonna hit you with scary. the bat. That's why I'm holding it like I'm just this. Just looking at you, and it's just. <laughs> Angie, do you, you were married and divorced at one time. Yeah. I don't, do you need I don't, this for the ex-husband, or he's good with you? They're good, they're good people. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. But I, actually, you left one part out that I know. You know, I met your son once or mm -hmm. twice, and gentlemen, you raised mm -hmm. him really well. And you know, some of the stuff we talk about about kids. So I'm gonna bring that up real quick. And your, your young daughter is how old now? Six. Adorable. And uh, really, uh, you, you did a great job with your kids. And I mean that not because we're just here, but you really raise your kids. And that's one of the things that uh, is important, somebody being a good parent and uh, both parents. And you speak highly of your ex. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why the kids are well-rounded. And they I, are. I give you they my are. props on that. I have, I have two kids. I have a 22-year-old that, it's funny that you say that, that I've never heard cursed in my life. Really? I mean, my friend's like, he probably curses when you're not around, but I'm like, but at least he respects me and doesn't do it when I'm around. Yeah. So I think I've done a good job um, wow. with both of them. Yeah. Yeah, the little one also, I mean, she's gonna be a little different because she's a little girl and, you know, times are different and she's a little firecracker, but hopefully, you know, she turns out to be the same. Yeah. And um, since um, you mentioned that, and we are celebrating um, Women's History Month now, um, I want to bring up the fact that, um, a very important subject, which is um, woman empowerment and um, being a single mother, being a single mother while homeschooling and um, while COVID has just been so much of a, a burden on me. But, you know, we keep, we keep pushing. And I have only one. 
I always say this, my God, what do these women with three kids do? Um, it's a very important subject. A lot of people are not talking about it. Um, women are depressed, are going through um, divorces. What This is happening because all the stress and... Well, they got to reach out to Dr. Kramer so they can <laughs> smoke a little bit and, uh, I mean, and get your cards today. That today. probably helps. But when, we, when you have kids, you know, you have to be 100% functional. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, that puts you in a little, you know, slower mood. It's funny that you mentioned that. Cause <laughs> what's, what's that been like to, to you know, I guess for, for the people out there that aren't homeschooling their kids during COVID, um, you know, describe a little bit about what it takes or what it's taken from you to, to kind of. It's a lot of work. First of all, you're not trained, right? You're right. not trained to, to deal with um, schooling, right? With the, with the, with the subject, with the math. I mean, it's a kindergarten and you're. And you know all these things, but their structure and the, the way they send things like links to homeworks that you as an adult, you can't even handle. Like, I, I don't know how to do this. Right. So you're not trained, first of all. Secondly, the kid knows that they're home. So they want to take a break every five minutes. I want to go to the bathroom. I want I need a snack. I don't want to sit on the table. I want to sit on the bed. Meanwhile, you have a job, too, and you have emails to respond to, and you have to be on the phone, or maybe you have to be on the Zoom call, and their breaks don't match with the Zoom call that you have with the same you know, schedule. So it's not easy. I mean, I, I, I just, I mean, the women out there, they're, they're, they're doing their thing. Yeah. They really are. And the men, too, because there are fathers, parents, both parents that are doing you know, an amazing job. It's, it's really not easy. Well, I think... And also, I mean, we were talking a little off air um, about this idea of of reinventing yourself, if you will. I don't know if just through COVID or maybe other times in your life where you felt that um, you needed to, you know, quote unquote, reinvent yourself. Um, I think as a woman, um, we we go through that plenty of times throughout our, our lives. Like they say, for example, a woman's body changes every seven years. Right. I believe that. And the same way we are always reinventing ourselves. So with COVID, I had worked for a company for four years doing human resources. I landed this job like I don't know where. I never went to school for it. And I actually was doing pretty well. And I lost my job in August. But and I thought to myself, you know, I don't want to do an office job anymore. I want to do something different. Right. Something that makes me ha happy. I, I like the human resources. Um, I liked it because of the human people part of it. But I hated the administrative work. Mm. Right. So. I had I got my real estate license in in 2005. It's still active now. I said to myself, you know, I, I enjoy this. I enjoy you know you know selling and buying properties. I'm gonna go back to that. Um, and yeah, and it's just a matter of you know making the 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 choice. You know, I said I don't want to do this real estate, this um, human resources thing anymore. It doesn't make me happy, right? So when you are reinventing yourself, you are looking for ways to fulfill yourself to to be happy right to do something that you're not gonna get up in the morning every day and say damn it i have to go to that place again you know what i mean um so i i think that that's what that means when you're reinventing yourself you're just looking for that happy place doing something that's going to be different it's going to make you happy what's your best advice for people um both men and women who who struggle to um put that first step forward or that first foot forward when reinventing themselves do you have a best Best advice, um, I would say plan it out mm. and literally plan it out. Write it down. This is what I want. And, and when you take your ideas and put it in paper, not on your phone, just write it down with a pen. Mm. Um, some, it's, it's something about that. You know, you remember it, right? You, you have a list, you have goals and, you, you know, you want to come back and make some changes or, you know, scratch something out and add something. Mm. Um, so that's one of my advice and really want it. I mean, if you really want it, you're, you're going to do things to make it happen. Now I'm actually quite curious. How, when did you guys first meet and how, I mean, did you know his background? I did not know. I did some <laughs> research. I was like, look at this guy <laughs> when we first met. Yeah. yeah. I didn't um, know his background now. Yeah, you didn't. You no. Well, I don't what, really what did, tell anybody. But I what, try yeah, to keep but, it quiet. What did you think when, when you learned his background? What, what was well, the reaction? I, I didn't have a reaction, actually. I, you know, everyone has their story. You know what I mean? Everyone has a past and has their story. And 
And he's doing great things now. You know, he's helping people, which is amazing. A lot of people don't do that. I mean, they have what they have and they live with it and they stay, you know, staggered. And he's he's making a change, which is awesome. Mm. Yeah. And for you, I mean, what's, you know, speaking of plans out, planning things out, uh, you know, do you have perhaps a, a long-term vision, a short-term vision for what you hope perhaps a, your own personal career is going to look like? Absolutely. Uh, my long-term goal is charity work that's what i love i've done it in the past um when i had my daughter i had to i, I still did it but it was it wasn't the same i still want to do it and i want to charity work so i collected toys and clothes and shoes and um school supplies for kids in the dominican republic wow. so funny story i drove around one day i started out in Prince Amway, went to brooklyn went to queens then manhattan then somewhere in new jersey and then back home it was just picking up stuff to send out to, to the American public, to these kids. Uh, I love it. And I, and I love doing that. I had events in New York and Manhattan um, to have people come donate stuff. Um, and that's what I want to do. I want to, that's how I want to retire. I mean, I want to do, do that and, and act forever. What? Until I'm like 100 years old. <laughs> Why was that? I mean, obviously you're from the Dominican Republic, but what is it about, um, you know, that kind of charity work that you felt obliged or maybe not obliged, but really wanted to do? Okay, so first of all, I always thought that I was going to have six kids when I was growing up. I always said, I'm going to have six kids. I mean, thank God that didn't happen, but I love kids. And my high school friends and I, we were celebrating our, what, 20th? Um, I don't know. I can't remember now if it was 20th or 15th. I'm that old. Um, <laughs> 20th year and then we thought you know instead of going somewhere because we would like you know have a party or something like that I thought why don't we just get together and and give back that would be better than just spending money on a big party let's just get together and bring stuff to uh, some kids in one in a town so we did it that first year and we loved it and then we continued to do it every every other year every year actually yeah. um that's how that really started I mean it's paused now but at some point I'm going to I'm going to continue doing that Good. I mean, mm -hmm. listen, the most, I think the most fulfilling thing you can do is I did cancer for kids a couple of Christmases mm -hmm. in a row. And I think anybody, uh, instead of giving, uh, taking and giving is, uh, something that's, you know, you, you, you can't have that, you have that feeling, especially what we do now. We're helping a lot of kids. So, you know, like to answer what you just said before, it wasn't important. I never bring it up to anybody about my past really, unless they know me from the show because it's about what we do now. So, you know, I think that's the biggest thing. When you're helping kids, that's why I think you enjoy it so much. Yeah. I think anybody does is because you know you're giving them something they're not able to get without you and helping, putting a helping hand out. And hopefully when they get older, they do the same. And, and, and it's and so easy too. Yeah, It's so easy. Like these kids would like use toys and they, they, they would love it. They'd be yeah. so happy with them. So easy. Stuff that you, you know, throw away here. Yeah. So I, you know, I used to put everything on Facebook. I'll, you know, if you have anything that you, if you have toys that your kids don't want anymore, clothes that they're not using, please just throw it in a box. We'll pick it up, and then you know we send it out there. We go to these towns. Um, we would always find a church that would help us set everything up, and we would bring like we would have we would do like an event. We would bring clowns and food and ice cream from them, and it would be a very good time. A very good time. Do you have one particular interaction with a, a kid after maybe giving them a? A toy or a piece of clothing that was memorable for you? Uh, I have pictures, yeah, a lot of pictures. Um, something memorable. I, I I can't. There's so many of them, but there's. I, I you know what I remember. I remember my daughter enjoying that very much. Yeah. I I took my daughter to the last one that we did, and she was only I don't want three or four, and she was so happy there with the kids. Kids playing outside with sticks and rocks, and she was enjoying that. Yeah. Like she wasn't on a phone or she wasn't on her tablet. She was just there enjoying you know, the chickens and, and stuff around also, and she was enjoying that, you know right. what I mean? And that's a very nice memory. That's a, I mean, it's a beautiful story. And also, I think, um, you know, I've only gotten to know you for like 30, 35 minutes, but... Um, you gotta come back on again. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I think it's, it's a, you know, a lesson of, of strength and, and to be able to, you know, juggle all these things while also having a career, I think is mm -hmm. remarkable. So um, all the more props to you, if you will. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I think for people out there that, that want to get in touch with you, please plug away. Um, you know, I know you have, a, you have a YouTube channel that 
I do. I have a YouTube channel. I have an, uh, a show with a friend. Also, um, you guys can find me on Instagram, okay. Angie underscore Jerez. How, you spell, how do you spell Jerez? So people make J E R E Z. I always say it's like Perez, but with, with a, a J. J. Yeah, because Perez is more common. And, and, you, and you have a book, excuse me, and you have a book coming out soon, too. Yes, you're absolutely. Working on. We're working on that. Okay. And your YouTube channel is also your name? So, yes, it's my name. And then there's another one that's in Spanish for a friend. Okay. It's called Déjame Decirte, which is with my friend Jennifer Mercedes. And what are your what are the two different shows? So, talk about? so my Auntie Jerez channel is about. Um, I'll try it. I, I try, you know, new things. I'm actually eating crickets in one of them, one of my shows. Oh. <laughs> and then they have to see this lifestyle, just you know, about things that's ha- that are happening in the moment, and just lifestyle type type of show. Beautiful. Well, uh, thank you for for taking the time to to come on the thank show you today. Guys. Thank you, Angie, yeah. for coming on. Thank you. Guys. And make sure uh, everyone out there to to go follow you everywhere on Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff, and uh, follow this guy to my right on Instagram at True John A. Light and myself at Felix Levine and uh, website JohnElite.com. Thank you everybody for tuning in with us. Thank you.